Hey guys, it's Hades here and welcome back to another redstone tutorial. I've got three things I'm going to cover this episode. The first one being redstone comparators and then redstone locks and then some T flip flop designs. So I'm going to jump straight into it with the redstone comparator and to tell you the truth, I do not know all the capabilities of this block. It is a very broad block and it can be used for a lot of different things. But I'm going to go over the three basic ones. So to start off right here, I've got an example of a comparator next to a storage thing. So this could be um, dispensers or hoppers or whatever, or chests is the best example. And if we go ahead and grab a stack of leaves, let's go ahead and put this in the chest. Like that. Well, let's go ahead and take them out first. As you can see, there is no signal coming out the back. And then let's start to put them in again. So if we put one thing in, it'll light up that first block. And if we put start putting more in, so I've got to get some more stacks, because it does take a fair bit. There we go. So about two and a bit stacks. We'll set off the next piston. And if you want to find out the exact numbers, you'll probably have to do some testing, because I don't even think the wiki would have information like that, but it might. So just basically, you get the point. You have your storage interface, comparator next to it, and the more stuff you put in the storage block, the more output you get. So it'll keep powering stuff and keep going like that. And I guess that's the first way of showing it. But that is not really what this block was even mainly used for. What I mainly use it for is the mode it's on now. Which is, if your input, I'm going to call this input A, is stronger than input B, which is the input that comes into the side, then the pistons will light up. Simple as that, guys. So if we bring this back to about there. Okay, let's bring this back. One, two, three, four. So this is five, all right? Just remember that. That's five right there. And this one is three. So as you can see, this one is three blocks away. So it is stronger than this one, which is four blocks away. And that's why nothing is lit up. But if we bring this for five blocks away, bam. This, this single strength, signal strength A, is now stronger than signal B, so they light up. But if we make this one stronger again, they'll go down. Make it less stronger, goes up. More stronger, goes down. Simple as that, guys. And you can do this at any distance. So this is commonly used for kind of secret entrances, I guess you could say. You could put that as a, a lever, so then when they find this secret lever, it'll turn off this signal. So we put this one back a whole bunch. And see, so this would be a lever. We'll actually grab one so I can give you a quick example. So you actually know why you'd want to do this. This would be your secret lever in some dungeon. And this is now powered. Blah, blah, blah. This opens some secret door at exact, exact distance. Someone finds a secret lever. Bam, it turns it off. But it, you could still keep the same power there. So that's why it's good. Alright. Now, you also have to understand this. Which is... Let's place it there, because this is maximum power, or it could be there, but it's the same distance. So if we go over a look at this, that powers all the pistons. So that's, I think it's 16 blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you have 15, and then, yeah, so it'll power, send power to this last block. But yeah, 15 blocks, and that is maximum. Even if we move this back one... It'll still be at maximum, so let's do that. As you can see, it still reaches all the distance. But then for every block we go back from here, see like that? We start to lose one block of power. So it's a really good way of only sending a certain amount of power through the circuit. When repeaters, once they get a signal, they just repeat it again and go the same distance no matter what. But comparators do not. So let's go ahead and put our torch here. See how another piston went down? We knock this one out, another piston goes down. So the weaker the input, the weaker the output. As simple as that, guys. That's another another use for it. But we're not done yet. No, we are not. We haven't even covered half of it yet. So let's go ahead and switch to the mode here. You can walk up to them and right-click to switch the mode to... I don't know the technical name, but I'm going to call it subtraction mode. Because when it's in this mode... It still does the same 
forwarding fun function, so it still forwards an, an output depending on what the strength of the input is. See, that's... Oh, well. Bang on. Just wait. Get rid of this. Put that up. And now let's try it from back here. See? That's still working as normal now. But the difference in this mode is the, the secondary input. So we'll call this input B. Now, alright. So this is a bit hard because I haven't actually used this much. I do not use this mode much at all. But my basic understanding is of it is this is your input minus the other input. So just say we do three blocks here. Oh, we should probably just stick to our same pattern, three. So three like that, plus that one, so I guess it's four. And that'll give us that type of output. But we can also do this. So if we put something here, it'll subtract it. See that? It subtracted one output from the other output. And I'm pretty sure this is the one it subtracts. So if we make this less, the output goes more. See that? Yep. Hopefully you understand that. So if we bring this in to give us a better demonstration, that'll give us... What is that? That's two blocks. So we'll place this here. Place this here. Why isn't that lighting up? Alright, I think we've got to have power here first. And then we put the power there to subtract. What is that? Facebook! Everyone, who got a Facebook message? It wasn't me. What do you mean? Alright. So there we go. Basically, that's your input and it subtracts. So, yeah. I don't know how to better explain this. That'll subtract nearly all of it. That'll subtract all of it. If we keep going out, that should subtract less. Yep, see, just like that. There we go. Hopefully you understand that. I don't fully understand it myself, but it's pretty much one output subtracts from the other one. So that's all of them up. That'll subtract some, that'll subtract less, that'll subtract even less. By less, I mean taking less power away from the output. And yeah. So if it, this is stronger than that, then it will totally annihilate it. Let's just double check that. Four. One, two, three, four. Yep. So this is the subtraction line, I guess you could call it. And if they are the same strength, there will be no output. And if this is stronger than this input, then there will be no output again. But for every block that it's weaker than the output, it will open up another piston or give it that much more power. Alright? So hopefully that made sense. That was kind of a bit of a rounded tutorial of it, because I didn't fully understand it myself, but... I do use it sometimes. I very, very rarely use this. It is mainly used for way more advanced circuits. And I usually only use the other method. But, you know, the subtraction method's good as well. So, input A. Let's just go over this one more time just to make sure you guys understand. Input A. If input B is the same strength, no output. If it is weaker, it'll start subtracting it from the total, pretty much. From how many blocks we go out. Simple as that. Let's go on to redstone locks now. Something I understand fully because this is my favourite mechanic in the game. I love redstone locks. So, here we have a signal, a repeater, it repeats the signal to the piston. Turn it off. If we put a repeater facing directly into this, and then we power it, it'll lock that repeater. See where that little torch is? It'll lock it. And what that does is when we, t we can turn this off now, but it will hold the output. See that, how it's holding the output? When there was no redstone lock there, that'll of course turn off. It goes on and off, like this. But, we can also lock it before it's powered, and then it will not power the piston. See that? Or, what you most likely would want to do, is you'd want to hold a signal. So hold an output. See? And, to be perfectly honest, this is by far my favourite addition to the game ever in Redstone, because I'm not a... I am kind of an engineer <laughs> in real life. I do computer systems engineering, but to be honest, this doesn't really interest me as much, the technical side of it. I like to make everything simple, and to make it simple, I use this locking mechanism to hold outputs, 
It's a way of getting memory. You want to be able to use memory. All computers use memory, and they all hold outputs. That's what you want to do. You want to try and hold as many values that you enter as you can. And this is my favorite way of doing it because it might not be the most compact, but it's the most simple to work out in your head. You want to hold an output? Just chuck a redstone lock there. You're all good. So let's get straight on to how to use this. This is two examples of a T flip-flop. There are tons of ways to build it. The basic explanation of a T flip-flop is this. So let's just get rid of this. If I turn this on, it'll be on. If I turn it off, it'll be off. If I go ahead and put a button here, let's grab both the different types of buttons. If I press this button, it'll go up, but then it'll also go back down. It won't hold the output anyway. What do you want to do with the T flip-flop? The basic concept of it is that if you press it once, it'll turn on and stay on. If you press it again, it'll turn off and stay off. That is what the objective of a T flip-flop is. The way to build it, you can do whatever you want. You can make up your own way, or you can copy one of the ways I show you now, but that's the basic idea. When you press the button, you want it to stay on. When you press the button again, you want it to stay off. So, first off, I'm going to show you what most people use on the internet. This is the conventional T flip-flop. I'll build one right next to it so you guys know what's going on. You want to just pick a spot, dig a hole, put a torch there. Then you want to grab yourself some pistons, just like that, on both sides of the hole. And you want to put a block in between it. So let's just we'll grab one of these cyan blocks. Just like that. You don't need to have a hole down there so we can patch that back up. But you want to have one hole with the redstone torch. And this is your output now. It's really as simple as that. That is your output. And that will be powered when there's a block on top of it. See? And when the block's not on top of it, it won't be powered. So now that we've done that, we can chuck this here. Two blocks like that. Put a redstone torch on each side which powers these pistons and then you're activating input so that is my input right there let's go ahead and bring it down just like this and we can bring it to let's bring it to a button yeah we'll put the button right there so this button feeds up to the top of this and it turns off these two torches and those two torches are the things that power the pistons and here's our output which only works when that block is on top of it. So we'll bring our output around the side and we'll put a piston on it. Pretend this could be a door, a circuit, whatever you want. We press the button, the pistons move, it is now powered. We press the button again, it switches to the other side and it is not powered. So it's fairly simple. Hopefully you guys understand that, how it powers when the block moves onto this side because it'll the redstone torch will power the block and send the output through. And this particular method I like a fair bit more than the other ones on the internet. Because you could actually... Let's go ahead and flip this off. I'll show you how to adjust this and make it a tiny bit more advanced. If you want to have two outputs, you can do this. Um, block that up. But use repeaters. And just do that. And then you can bring the source out. You just need to use repeaters there to separate these two outputs because you don't want them getting cross mer merged together and stuff. Let's chuck that there. Now when we press the button, it'll rotate between those two. See that? And that's just making... I guess there's no real explanation for it. It's just a double T flip-flop. It's just using the circuit we already have to add something else. See that? So it's extremely useful for doors. Just pretend that's a door and you want a button to open it. You don't want it to do like this one over here and just go up for a second and then close on your face. You'd want it to stay open. So that's the T flip flop there. And that's the exact same as this little example I got going on. But now to show you how I like to do things. Now that to me, I guess it's a bit too big. I know there are ways of doing it smaller with different redstone tools like comparators. But this is my favorite using the redstone lock because I like how adjustable it is. Now, this is the basic setup, and here is the output right here. So we chuck that up there. We press this button, it'll turn off. We press this button, it'll turn back on. Now I'll show you why this works. Here is the power. Here is the repeater that sets off the lock, and this is powering the circuit. So, when this lock gets turned off, this power will turn off this block, which will turn off this piston, which will 
turn off the power, which will turn this off. And basically, it just goes around in circles. So we'll press it again. As you can see, the circuit now this circuit's off. Now this torch is off because that's powered. See how this side of the lock is powered now? It's oh, it's a bit hard to explain. See, see the lock? <laughs> well, I'm getting a bit abusive now. It's okay, guys. If you don't, you know, I don't know. Whatever. See, this side of the lock is powered. That is correct, I guess. And we flick it. Now this side of the lock is now powered. And I click it again, it'll be the other side of the lock will be powered. That's basically how it works. And I really like it because it's only one high. And you can easily stack it on top of each other. And you can easily modify the input to make it like a game, I guess. Because, as you can see here, this button works perfectly. This whole circuit runs off timings. If I ruin the timings here and change this to both one tick, it won't work. See, it'll just flick straight through it. It'll go, oh, it went on, off, on, off. So it does work like that, but that's just because I fluked it. If we change it to an odd number, now let's try it. You yeah, see, now it's not working because the timings are off. But if you use full ticks, all four ticks on both of them, it'll work with a long delay. And if we use one tick on both of them, I think it worked also with a shorter delay. So let's see, it goes up and down twice. I'd prefer you not to do that if you're doing a door. It's unnecessary opening closing. People would be like, why is the door opening and closing real quick? So that's why I do use it on the full tick delay. The four tick delay on both of them. And that gives me a good nice time. Look at that. Perfect. And it also doesn't work with a wooden button, as you can see. Because wooden buttons have a different timing. See how it's not changing like a T flip flop should. It's staying on the same output. That's because a wooden button gives you the wrong type of input. The wrong timings. And this is all based off timings. Now, you're probably thinking, this is a tiny bit more confusing. So why would I do this? But I want to show you exactly why. You can bring off heaps of outputs from here. It is extremely compact. It is silent, unlike these ones that use pistons. This one is 100% silent, so you can't hear the background noise. And also for the input, there is a few... Let's quickly get rid of this. Get out of here. I like to do a few different things. You can modify this and just say we go ahead and grab ourselves a block. Alright? Normal block. We chuck our wooden button on here. That'll still work. All the way over there, that'll still work. And you can extend this input as far as you want. But of course you can do that on other T-flip-flop. So what am I saying? You can also do this. This is the good bit. Is You can regulate it between right and wrong buttons and different inputs. Because of course this one won't work. It'll keep it open. You'll just be like, what? So you could put like different type of inputs and make them have to press the right button. And to be honest, I just like it better. It's just, it's just better, guys. Just do it. You're just going to have to trust me on that one. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of a practical example for this real quick before I wrap up the episode. Okay, let's pretend that's your door, right? So you might want someone to be able to open and close the door. Say so close, click it open, like a normal T-flip-flop -flop would. And you might want to have another button to maybe drop a couple cows down. It might be a door that has a bunch of cows in there, like they're all standing on top. And you might just want to drop a couple, so that'll do a quick flash of opening and closing the door. Maybe for an animal farm, if you only want to let a certain amount in, you could quickly do that. Or then if you wanted to walk in, you could fully open the door and then fully close the door. And it's kind of a bad example, but the point is, you can customise the input to only work for certain things. And you can also bring off inputs, you can bring off the other thing from here. This would be your other one. Actually, no, it wouldn't. Um, where would the other output be? Well, obviously the output's off, so it doesn't really matter, but you get the point. I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully you understand that. If you have any more questions, make sure to post it in the comments below. And also post in the comments what you want me to cover next episode. Because now that you know about T-flip-flops, you just opened your redstone world up to a whole lot more. With T-flip-flops, they're basically the key to everything in redstone. And redstone comparators, they're a confusing one, but they are also extremely useful. 
So there's a lot more things I can get into now, so make sure to suggest them in the comments. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to chuck this video a like if you want to support the series. And I'll see you later.